please uh, don't be jealous. I told you, don't come make a line, don't come and ask questions, don't ask for a soul name, don't ask me to bless a mala, don't come and see me. And then you see four people in that break come to see me and I take the time to answer your questions. If all you see is the protected potentials in your mind, you become jealous. Why do they get to see? Well, it's the people I work with and they know they have to come and keep me updated on the actual going on. Okay? So you see, before you, you can understand, I saw two or three people like, I can't go and see you and hug you. And, no. And then some people come, oh, I'm so happy. Yes, you know, what about it? It's all whispers, you know, it's secrets. No, it's management. It's, you know, what time the food coming and stuff like that. Okay? It's, it's business. We have to deal with that. But before you got the actual information, all you could, all you had was the shadows of what your mind could make out of your own desires that were not satisfied. Eh? So I thank you for understanding. If I tell you don't come and see me and you see someone coming and see me, it doesn't mean that they're cheating. It means that they probably know what they have to do. And, you know, it's the most advanced people also that have been working with me for a few years. So maybe it's, go it's okay, right? But you, can't, you have to look at this. I want to go and ask a question. He says not to. I don't get to. And the other just goes, nah, 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 nah. yeah, yeah, sure. That. Okay. You know, you, you, we have these situations often in our life where all we have to do is, is like a, the point of the iceberg to interpret and, and we have no idea what's going on in deep. Okay. Now, just before the end of that uh, last speech, I said, and then we're going to talk about, beep, you know, censored that, that I forgot. Uh, and then I forgot, and and I don't feel like rewinding the camera. Like, what did I say? Because even the note takers didn't take that a note. Who remembers when I said? Now we're gonna talk about this, and I felt a reality shift. I felt like a, no, you're not gonna talk about this, and it, it came out of my mind, came out of, of yours. It just went, whew. okay. So I'm gonna make a speech, and we're gonna see the contrast between that actual speech and what. I talked about in the previous video when we get to see it later on. Yeah? You can talk about the fact that sometimes we forget about what we want to see. <laughs> we can say that sometimes we forget. <laughs> sometimes as a, as a way to lie to ourselves. We can say that we forget sometimes because there's an actual change in direction. In our mind, we have a line of thought. And in our heart, our potentials are modulated in a certain way. And if there's a remodulation, the mind doesn't keep track, and we lose it. Did it ever happen? You're having a conversation with someone, and your middle of the phrase are at the end of one, and you go, <coughs> <coughs> and both at the same time. Sometimes we go, and both of them, both of you, you went beep, through reality. Soul communicates. Come back as human. <coughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, pretending that nothing happened, you know, and, uh, and, and that's why it's just, you don't even remember what you were saying 10 seconds before, soul took over, readjusts the stuff, okay, go back to the matrix and forget about that glitch. <laughs> uh, that was weird. Ah, uh, sign it again. Ah, uh, uh, that was weird. Some of you who didn't see the movie Matrix have no idea what I tried to imitate with that. So, okay. It was the cat going two times. Okay? Another example. If I don't give you the information precisely as it is, you won't get it. Okay? All you'll have is the shadow of a tail of a lizard to interpret that, uh, you know, that wasn't it. You know? Lost in the desert, what the fuck happened? <coughs> <sighs> the mind is like that. Okay. And we just had one. During the break, three people came talking to me about different topics, about the management of that thing. And, and I felt we need to change direction. So I explained that, that sometimes it happens, so we're going to change direction. Okay. Breathe. Look inside. Global perspective, Airbender, can you hear? Global perspective, in this case, is understanding that everybody does that, and it is not that shameful, it is simply irresponsible not 
to take care of it. And everybody does that, and because of that you should also forgive them, those who do not know, who will never take the time to know the lies that are going in our head, and have some kind of good faith in human people, okay, in, in humanity. That most of what they do is still honest, especially when it has to do with work, when they the work that delivers the good work, or else they wouldn't be accepted anymore, they wouldn't be paid for doing what they do. So there are a lot of good things that are not lies. There's an awful lot of, of good communication. There's there's full of beautiful <coughs> moments where people are doing what they're supposed to do at the moment they're supposed, and no one's lying about nothing. It's just pretty rare when it gets to contacts and relationship, okay? And sometimes you've seen it at the job. Someone wants to do something, but you know it's to impress the boss, but this person might even ignore himself or herself. It's okay. okay. Forgiveness. Very, very important aspect. Forgiveness. You are like that. We can say, you have been like that before you learned. Well, <laughs> actually, you're still like that. You just learned about it. Okay. This power is still strong inside you. It takes some practice to go and sing down. Practice in humility. Eh? It takes time. And there's a practice called exhaustive observation that I've taught in other seminars, but I think we're going to do a practice of exhaustive observation. Lying to ourselves when our um, experience involves emotions. Lying to ourselves is someone we've been, something we've been doing all our life, okay? I'm going to try to free that brain thing that is stuck on the other topic. All right. Exhaustive observation is kind of a passive, soft, and yet profound integration. Integration, as I teach us, is an active act of finding emotion, getting out of justification in the mind. What do I feel? And from the feeling, implicate the intellect to interpret it correctly. Okay? Implicate the intellect to understand the patterns of the ego, the mask, and everything. Okay? That's an active work. Now there's a passive version of that. And it is sit and watch long time. Okay? We're going to do a bit of that. Eyes open or closed, but closed is a tad better, depending on how you feel. Sometimes just people just look down. And as long as your mind is in the inside. We're going to do exhaustive observation. It's not like <coughs> Vipassana, um, even though it really looks like Vipassana. And it differs in the fact that you are still focusing on one aspect. I will now, we will now, focus <coughs> on the fact that we are dependent on being right, even if we're wrong. Because that's the topic of the day. Sink down. Go in the feeling. Okay? If it's stuck in the interpretation of your head, well, it will work over an awful lot of period of time, which is not useful and efficient. Sink down in the guts, the feeling of the humility required to admit shame, pride, and fear. Forces inside that want to keep us in the arrogance. Exhaustive observation. Don't go into the mental thing. Don't flee in the idea, yes, I have to change. No, you don't. I have to forgive myself. Well, not yet. It will happen naturally if you do the work correctly. Don't flee in the mind like, I've been so bad, from now on I have to become a better person. No. We might take care of that one time, but right now, don't dwell in the, in the defensive system. I need to change that. I really need to work on it. No, just, I have been dishonest with myself. I am humble. Exhaustive observation. 
of the continuous lies of projection. Exhaustive observation is not doing something with it. It's not finding a solution. It's not forgiving yourself, although forgiveness will happen. It's not doing anything than just look at it. And in this case, it's a guilt. You will have regret. Do it. Feel it. If you felt abandoned, I was so lost in my own lives, feel abandoned. That's it. Just go down. <sighs> Good. Continue to feel and admit we have to do exhaustive observation because if we only see it in the head we won't go deep in the topic we need to take time so you are inside yourself doing his observation, observation, which is more than observation, it's feeling. Admitting that you were and still are stuck with the lies. Just that. And the emotions that rise. <sighs> Once in a while a deep breath and you continue. Usually, exhaustive observation, we take uh, 20 minutes. And with practice, we go one hour. Now, this is a seminar. We want to be efficient. I want you to continue while we need it. And you'll do the rest at home. It takes a lot of humility to admit that I was wrong in most of my motivations, especially when it had to do with contact with people, relationships. Parents, lovers, children, co-workers, friends, and eventually even society. If there is fraud in society, there is fraud in your own relationship. Some people lie to themselves regarding how they talk to their dog, can you imagine? Well, you've been doing that. Oh, do you love me, don't you? You love me, you want to play right now? And he's thinking like, she's going to give me food, she's going to give me food. <coughs> oh, you want to go outside and play, eh? Just projecting your shit on the, dog, the dog's desire. I mean, you do this with everything, it's okay. Good. You can do half an hour or an hour of that when you go back home. Now we'll just let it settle. It can be conscious repressal. It can be just relaxing it, letting go away, which is not repressal, but just letting it go. And you know that you'll address it again. And for some of you, I know we'll keep just staying focused on that while we keep on teaching because I want to teach something. Why was it so required, so important to take some time to look at it without doing nothing? That's the point. 
And I remembered partially what I wanted to tell you last at the end of last conversation. Your traumas and your lies were progressively built in your system through experiences, traumas, difficulties, and challenges that you have experienced. Your pain was brought inside you through life experiences. You can't think your way out of it. Only experiences will lead you out of it. So when we do integration, oh, I know why I, was felt, I felt so abandoned. He rejected me. And then I'm not blaming him. I'm honest enough to say I felt rejected. And I felt rejected because I hoped it would be there. And he, I played the victim toward that Savior because I was so attached to getting the attention. I mean, you can be so quick and good at naming da 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 but you didn't take the time to sink in and feel each of those masks. And that's why two months later, you still do it because identifying the trauma, identifying the potential does not dissolve it. You have a potential here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and they're all related to a way that you go about your life. And you got one here, another one, and then this one that's color lettered, and you can't even identify. And that's what people do with treating therapists, which is usually pretty good, by the way. Don't discredit their great work. <coughs> but the person doing entire therapy identifies that was caused by the mother, which is still really, she, she didn't work, so I went to this big one to break my heart, da 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 da. And you can talk about it for 10 years. Each thing that you have identified, you need to look at it until the hurt is fully awakened. And once the hurting is fully awakened or that power is fully awakened, you still have to look at it until it has stopped. But the mind doesn't care. The intellect wants to understand intellectually. So once it's got it, he does, your mind doesn't see the purpose of continuing. So it just shows down, down, down. And what you do is you cross a lever. <coughs> cross a lever, that was weird. You just, cross a, you just cross a river, jumping from one rock to another, thinking that you have successfully crossed that river using a few of those patterns you have identified. But the thing is, you're still stuck in drama. Okay? Because this, you just re land here. Oh my God. It's a loop. <laughs> you know that sci-fi horror movie where the guy just runs and runs and runs and opens the door and he's in the same corridor. And <gasps> that's what you're going through all the time. That's why it works. In the horror movie, the long corridor that stretches, that's what you're living. Okay. The thing is, you didn't take the time to pick up that rock and discover what was hidden under it and then place it correctly, readjust it to make just a nice path across the river like we're supposed to. It takes work to look in there. So before the pain is awakened, you don't feel that much pain, so you think, I've done it, yeah, I felt it, I took a breath, it hurt, so I'm done. Bullshit. That's your mind saying, okay, in integration, you need to go feel the hurt, I just feel some hurt, okay, let's go on, let's go on, please, okay? I don't want to, to dwell on that. That's why you have to do integration five, six, ten years. And you do integration like a hundred accumulated hours because what you've been doing is like a frog leaping from one rock to the other and not doing the proper integration like I told you to do each time. Identifying it in your intellect is absolutely imperative and essential. And it's absolutely essential also to observe that accumulated potential until it is freed. And once freed, until the fuel is burned, that energy invested in there is consumed by the observation. That's why emotions still torture you. I do integration, doesn't seem to work. No, you're not doing integration. You're doing like 5% of the, of, of the thing which is just 
the intellectual, the required intellectual participation of your mind into the work and integration. Once you've seen the rock, when you know what it is, you go, you sit on it. <coughs> <sighs> it took you so long to build a system that does not admit that you have been lying to yourself. It takes a long time of simple contemplation. I have the principles of lying to myself. I feel the hurt. I feel the pain where it comes from. I feel the pain it sustains. And I just feel... I don't, don't get your mind to try to go out of that. You took a long time through experiences to build these systems. You need to take a long time to feel that entire principle until it loses power over you. That's why we do exhaustive observation in the process of integration. Okay? You found a good pattern. You've identified the eight steps of your system of... I'm afraid because I was rejected last time. I felt so abandoned, bad because I was a victim hoping to be saved and he didn't. He rather manipulated me and actually, you know, I was the one trying to manipulate him into loving me. I was so attached to a need. I want to, yeah, that, that, that. You do your stuff. You're good at that because it's cool to understand where shit comes from and how our mind builds those defensive systems. But once you got it in the head, nothing changed. Nothing changed including properly understanding it because seriously all your deductions are still based on what you perceive of what you think is deep inside so you had to take we took like five or ten minutes now to just dwell on the I am like to myself what does that do it goes into the line to yourself and it builds a new potential <laughs> I can admit it. So it's the time required to nourish the energy of I can admit it and you will stop lying to yourself when you have contemplated long enough I admit that you are ignorant <coughs> and that potential of admitting you have to be humble will grow with practice and observation and at one point it will become bigger then your potential of lying to yourself, that's when you're going to cross that line and start being honest with yourself. Before that, you're still going to lie to yourself 15 minutes after this speech. Do you understand? Forgive yourself. You're doing your best. That's how you were trained. But you build the potential inside you that lies. So observe the, the lying potential and the self-ignorance sustaining the self-sustaining <coughs> ignorance potential, that you have to observe. It will diminish because while you observe it, it burns, it's consumed and it goes away. And as you do the practice, the, the practice of being honest enough to admit that you were not honest enough will, will alter you and it will go. You know, it's through the feeling of experience. So you sit. I feel so crappy, I just lied to someone because I couldn't satisfy my own desire by being honest enough to say what I wanted really to have, but I'm still too ashamed to say it. Well, if you're too ashamed to, to, to go tell something to someone, sit in it and integrate, I feel ashamed. Oh, but Maha, I did it five hours, I wasn't ashamed anymore, but I still can't go and see that lady because now I'm afraid. I'm afraid of rejection. I was ashamed of my desire, now I accept it, but I'm afraid of being rejected. Good, go sit, feel afraid of being rejected. <laughs> that's, that's the point. That's the point of the entire thing. You'll do one step after another, patiently, as much as in your childhood and teenagers, you took years to build defensive systems. It's going to take a while, not years, <coughs> at least you know weeks and maybe months of practice maybe and you remember your first integrations you wanted to die at one point you, you were not happy and it hurt very bad and and your third integration was you know suffering but not dramatically and and then after 10 or 20 or 50 integrations well yeah yeah okay another piece of crap I have to go into and that's it. You make peace with the fact that if you don't go into your stuff that hurts, life is going to impose it on you and strike you so bad that you will have no choice and you'll be crawling on the ground, hurt, because life will have tortured you in various ways. Why do life impose that, these trials? Because you don't go and discover the wisdom 
of suffering and happiness before nature imposes it. And if you go before it actually has to physically manifest, it won't have to physically manifest because you'll have that power to change it. That's how you handle your life. That's how you create a new living. You go feel stuff. So it's not only feeling the thing you want to experience, it's feeling what you're afraid to experience and what is against that experience and maybe the arrogance and the egocentrism of needing to experience something. Maybe you could free yourself from the need to experience something. So that the causality will do what is most perfect for you. What you really want, you will have. But only if you comply with the way that nature works. Okay? Leaping like a frog from one rock to another, just nothing else than leap from one rock to another. That's it. You're just being honest with yourself is not accept to identify and say it in your mind. I'm honest with myself. I know I'm. I've been arrogant. That's not being honest with yourself. That's to be honest enough at least to identify it. Being honest with yourself is to go deep inside, and you might figure out something else that you ignore. There was a hidden cause why you have been arrogant or selfish about that precise topic or this other topic. You understand? By feeling, by turning out the rod, by, by making the effort to go as long as it took for the feeling to come. That reveals new information that is projected on your membrane, your diaphragm, that allows you to see other parts so that you can see and start basing your interpretation on what you see under the rocks instead of what is projected on, on the surface of the water. Yeah? Oof. Exhaustive observation is gazing. That's not a beautiful eye. Slightly recuperated. <laughs> Gazing low. Okay. Deep in the waters. And these waters, the surface of the water is troubling. It's not clear. You have to settle down. Now if you want to see below the surface of the water and start to move the rocks and stuff, you're gonna want your mind to shut up. That's another thing about exhaustive observation. You can't stop your mind. You can't stop your mind that is extremely intensely working and avoiding you seeing below its surface because it wants to be in charge and it's not. You, know, you have to defeat your mind's wanting to be in charge. So the water's troubled and if you make an effort to try to stop your thoughts, what you're doing is you're using your hand trying to stop the wave. Stop, 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 stop. You just make more. You understand? So, exhaustive observation is you sit and you patiently wait. You don't try to stop your mind. You simply not stop caring about it. And when you see your mind tries to go into some kind of fantasy or a mental fabrication, <sighs> deep waters. So you're sitting, intensely implicating yourself in just sitting. Okay? Sitting is called asana in Sanskrit. And to be strongly invested into an action, we say vi. We repeat, vi. So vipassana means intensely implicated and absorbed. And just that. Now that is what led the Vipassana people to lose a bit of the, the wisdom of, of uh, the Buddha. They don't put a focus on an experience, on an emotion or something precise. They start with a clear mind. So it becomes just an act of fixity. They wait for the shit to happen. That's why it takes 12 hours instead of half an hour. To go deep down into an experience and take it because in Vipassana, like it stop, you sit and you wait for it to aggress you. Choose your topic, do the Vipassana, but choose your topic and stay on it. 
and just practice not believing the fantasies about it. I should have done something better. I know I did something right. No, stop it. You know, maybe you could have done something better, maybe not, but your mind that tries to go into the intellectual resolution, stop it. Till you get it. It hurts. I was abandoned. Now these powers and potentials inside you will not jump in your face to aggress you anymore. The waters will be more subtle, more settled, we could say also, and it will be easier to see the next vipassana or the next exhaustive observation. So that's why I don't teach it as vipassana, because vipassana is an absolutely wonderful method. That was not that is not really taught in the way that the Buddha taught it. Okay. You have to start with just allowing your mind to settle, but eventually you need to go into the active practice of doing nothing. Okay, active doing nothing. You're, there is something going on. It's the sinking down. Okay. Sometimes it takes a lot of effort to do that. Okay. You know, I was doing therapy with Tina once, and every, I don't know, 10 seconds, yeah, but I mean, I don't deserve that. Stop. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Just stay on the feeling. But this guy, you know what he did? That, that. I, it's possible. I, I don't want to credit or discredit what you're saying. I'm saying stay on the emotion. And every attempt to get the focus off of the stay there and feel. It took half an hour or something just to get you to stop. And boom! She blew in tears and she cried and her mind was not trying anymore to get out of that. She was finally getting it out. And then it's like, <sighs> that's why I was so fighting to go get an experience. It's because it was pushing from inside. Now I don't need that experience anymore. I'll take another example. Let's say you're, that, uh, you're addicted to a, a guy or a girl, you know, your ex-girlfriend, your ex-boyfriend, or someone in the past, you have addiction, you have this kind of feeling of hoping it's going to eventually come. you got something from the past. Even if you have a couple right now, you still have stuff about, you know, the, your first lover when you were 8 or 12 or whatever. We don't know. Eh? There's stuff going on. And you feel some kind of insecurity today, and you think that is because you had a heartbreak when you were 8 or 12. But I, I sometimes get people to see, you know, that heartbreak you had when you were 8 or 12. Why did you stay stuck with it? It's because when you were young, it's someone you gave you something that your parents stopped giving. That's why you're still holding on to the past boyfriend or girlfriend. It's not because you want that boyfriend again. You're not addicted to the boyfriend or the girlfriend. It's not a person. It's a specific experience that you didn't have anymore. The last person that provided it, you're stuck with that. It's not even the person. Because you can go even further and remember when your parents were touching you in a certain way of affection and kindness, taking care of you, and one point when you were a child, it stopped. That's what you still yearn for. So that person that came to me a, a while ago saying, I'm stuck with the old boyfriend, I had to bring that person, <coughs> just get her to admit it's an experience. I didn't go to the parenthood thing until the next step. Okay, now let's see what's behind that other rock. Until it was like, my parents were putting so much emotional pressure on me because of their own fighting that they didn't give me the affection I, I wanted. So that when someone in my life came to give me that type of experience, shah, I need that and my guts just held on so tightly, not even knowing it was not an addiction to that person. It was an abandonment or rejection from, from early childhood. Okay. So until you do exhaustive observation and do the time to dwell deeply in those waters, you don't know what is behind that rock. You don't know what is projected. So you do your best, 
I'm freaking out right now of insecurity. Ah, it's because I'm still stuck with the past lover. Ah, no, it's because I still, I have a feeling and this feeling pushes from inside, that's it. Every story outside, the moment <coughs> you name someone that you think is an outside cause, the moment it's projected outside, it's a flaw, it's a joke, it's a stepping stone that is essential for you to do, to make the links, it's okay. But it's not the pure profound truth. The pure profound truth is when you can be just alone and that emotional trauma does not implicate anyone anymore, including your parents that could have uh, could not have done something. Okay? It's hard work. It's one thing at a time. But if you don't take care of it, life would jump in your face and will keep imposing these trialing moments, including heartbreaks. The heartbreaks you have with lovers, the heartbreaks you have with parents with children, with friends, you can have a heartbreak with your job. A heartbreak is not just an emotional relationship with people you had sex with. A heartbreak is is anything profound in your heart that allowed that, that start to build and then it broke. So if you really enjoy like there's a guy he's got a heartbreak with his with his career, not even with the job where he worked. I'm so sorry I don't work at that restaurant anymore. I love working there. That was not the truth. It was, I was a cook and I can't be a cook anymore. It hurts so much to lose the career I so enjoyed. You know, that was a heartbreak with his career. That's just examples I'm taking, you know. More or less accurate. The goal is for you to understand the topic. You understand? Good. All right? Breathe. <clears throat> Once you're back home, to become your autotherapist, you go sink down in that hell hole, in that pit, and you do nothing. You don't try to stop it. You don't go along with it in the fantasy. You don't play with it in your mind. Just go down, and the intellect is only active when it's about identifying the true feeling. And everything that is about justification, just let it settle down. Be patient enough for the mind to settle down while your focus is on that rock. So you won't create more ripples. Okay? You won't create more mind mental activity by paying attention to the mind. Pay attention to what you think, it keeps thinking. Because your attention is in the mind, you nourish the mind, it stays active. Nourish the heart, pay attention to the heart, the mind will settle down. And be offended. <laughs> your mind be, will be uh, angry at you for uh, for you know, declaring that it does not hold, uh, hold that much power over you anymore. <sighs> Takes humility, forgive yourself, and do the work. Good. Thank you.